what it looks like. My little boot right here is completely cracked. That's not supposed to be like that. So that's another issue we need to address. <laughs> As you guys just saw, it's been an annoying two, three weeks with this car. We've been having a lot of issues and today I think we might make the first step in fixing it. So if you haven't watched the last week's video or the last few videos about this car, we were having an issue where the coilover right here was hitting the rear CV boot right down here and causing it to rub. Now, I wasn't really sure why this was happening. I thought it was my alignment at first, but an alignment shouldn't make that much of a difference. So I thought, you know what? Why not just fix the CV boot, get a new axle because you can't really replace the CV boot, which is the unfortunate part here. If I fix the axle, then it was just gonna rub against the coilover and the same issue was gonna happen again. So I reached out to BC Racing with the issue that I was having and I explained to them like, hey, that my CV boot kept hitting my coilover and I'm not sure what to do about it. And they were kind enough to send me out some new parts, not an entire new coilover, but this is the threaded part and a newer lower mount. And they said that this should be thinner and should fit the Dodge and this should fix the issue. Now I am only having this issue on this side of the vehicle, but I didn't want the other side to go bad. Um, I'm sure the same issue will happen there eventually. And I don't want to get new axle for the other side as well. So I went ahead and bought two sets of the lower mounts and this threaded insert. And that way I'll go ahead and just fix both right now so that the other side doesn't go bad as well. What BC Racing sent out to me was this right here. Now this is just the lower mount right here. This is gonna attach to the lower control arm. We have the top threaded insert. Everything else like the top hat that goes into the car is actually just gonna be replaced from the old set to this new set right here as well as the lock and collar. So we need to go ahead and transfer all that over and then this kind of thinner design right here should help me out and not hit any of the future CV boots that we have since this one is already gone bad. So we got the new one here, we got the other new one for the opposite side. Now we need to go ahead, measure the coilover length from the top hat all the way down to where that, where it meets the lower control arm. Measure that so we can have that exact same measurement on this and then we need to go ahead, pull that out, start replacing all the different components of it and uh, this shouldn't take too long. I think it's gonna be pretty simple, but I usually say that it ends up being a lot longer than expected. So from the top of the top hat, all the way down to the little knuckle is what we're gonna be measuring. So we're looking at about 22 and three quarter inches uh, from the top, from the bottom of the top hat, all the way down to the center of the bolt that goes into the lower control arm. So now we got that. We gotta make sure we remember that number. So I think I'm gonna write it down somewhere before I forget because that would suck. Got it. So now we gotta start pulling everything apart and getting that coal over out. I don't think it should be that bad, but it's always harder than expected. So we got the old one out, and as you can see, I beat this one up pretty good, trying to make space for the boot. But now we gotta go ahead and transfer this over to here. We got this little adjustment knob for the dampening off and then this is the extender for the dampening knob so that you can reach it from the trunk. So now we got to throw everything on here and I think it is going to be a little bit of struggle to get this back in since this whole assembly is a little bit longer but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Now this goes on. So I think we got everything transferred over properly. We got the little extender, we got the little boot back on and we have this at the shortest ride height as of right now so that way we don't have to take anything off um, the other parts of the assembly and we can just slide this in and throw it on. And then from there we'll actually extend it back out to 22.75 inches and that's gonna be a proper ride height. So it should be right back to normal. And it might be a little bit higher at first but I think once it settles in, we should be good to go. But let's go ahead and try throwing this in and seeing how it fits. So we got the new coilover in and now he's just measuring to see if we have the same height 
as 22.75. How are we looking? Right about there. 0.75, right? Yeah, I'd say we're a little bit past it. Just a little bit. Are you measuring that hole or are you measuring the hole on the actual coilover? The hole on the actual coilover. Actually, no, I'll say we're right there then. Right, because I'm seeing 22 right at that bridge. Yeah, I'll say 22 and a half. Okay, so I mean, that's fine. Even if it's a little bit lower, I don't think it'll be too big of an issue. So now, we just gotta tighten everything back up and then start on the other side. Okay, so we had some difficulties, but we got everything back in. We got this tightened down. This is now sitting at 22.5 inches, so the car is gonna sit a little bit lower than it was before. And we threw an extra layer of silicone on the boot for the time being, because I think the game plan is gonna be to drop this off at another dealership and see if they fix it this time, because now they won't be able to tell it was hitting the, the coilover like they did last time. So hopefully we get lucky this time. If not, um, we're just gonna have to fix it ourselves and we're gonna have to spend the 500 to get a new axle. We're just gonna tighten everything down. While Sofiane's doing that, I'm gonna throw some anti-seize on the spacer. Don't want that getting stuck on there like last time and we should be good to go. So this side took about an hour, I would say. I think this side is gonna be a little bit quicker because now we know what to do and what not to do. Get this car out because it's been sitting in this garage for about three weeks, two weeks, something like that, and I need a car. As you can see, none of my other cars are here. We got the second one off, and this one was a lot easier since we kind of found out what our mistakes were on the first side. So now we're just gonna start putting this all on the new one. And again, this is kind of the difference between the two right here. And yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. I think we'll be able to finish this out in like 20, 30 minutes, and we should be good to go. Okay, so this is how we actually got the coilover in. So what we did was we loosened up the coilover, made it to its shortest length, and then we pushed down on the entire um, assembly here, it got the coilover in, and now we're gonna adjust it to height. So once we get this top part uh, tightened up a little bit, then we'll go ahead and adjust the actual height of the entire thing and then bolt everything back up and we should be good to go. There is now a bunch of clearance between the boot, this one is not ripped, and the coilover. So this is exactly why I went ahead and got it done on this side as well because I didn't want this boot to rip. And then after that, just tightening up the strut bar in the trunk and that's it. And literally five minutes later, we got the <laughs> side done so fast, um, but we got the new Pull over in. This is now all tight. We got the lower control arm situated. I'm gonna take the spacer, put some anti seize on this as well, just so we don't have the same issue as last time. And this car should be good to go again. I'm actually so excited to get this done. This car has been sitting in the garage for so long and I just haven't been able to drive it. And now at least I can get the boot situated because I'm not sure if I talked about it before, but there was no reason of me fixing the boot, especially with the coilover situation if the new boot was just gonna go bad as well. So now we got the coilover situated, now we can decide what we wanna do with the boot. If we wanna replace the entire axle, get a new universal boot and just put that on there because I think the joint is still okay. So we'll see what we decide to do in a week or so hopefully we don't have any issues like i mentioned i did add another layer of this sealant on the boot just to hold it together for the time being and that should give me a few days with the car see what happens next thank god we got both sides done the car is sitting a lot higher now like before it used to tuck but now there's a gap i'm not sure if that's because it's a new strut and it's still settling, but hopefully that settles down to where the previous ride height was. I think it should be the same technically because we measured the strut the exact same height, but it was so much easier with two people. So if you gotta do something, anything with coilovers, grab a second hand, it makes life so much easier. Now we just gotta clean up and I'm not gonna move this car for the time being. I'm just gonna let it sit in the garage until that uh, rubber gasketing hardens up a little bit. So tomorrow morning, I'll take it for the first drive and I'll pick up the camera then, see if we're all good to go. If you want some old beat up coilovers for your Dodge Charger, uh, you can have them for free, right? 
We got two of them. Where's the other one? Oh, it's on the box, right? Yeah. See, this one isn't as bad. I didn't. I didn't mangle this one. All right, this is the one that was on the good side, technically. But as you can see, there's still a little mark where the boot was hitting the coilover. But this one's still good. I would, I would give this away. So if anyone needs an extra for a Dodge Charger 11, 2011 plus for the right side, you can have this. But for the left, take it at your own caution because this is pretty bad. It's been a few days now. We finished up replacing the coilovers a few days ago and I've been driving this car a lot the last few days and I thought I'd give you guys a little update on how it's been holding up. Now that we have a gap between the boot and the coilover, it is not rubbing anymore. There's actually more than enough space. So now we can actually just replace the boot instead of the entire axle. Unfortunately, like I mentioned before, they don't have just the boot. So I am gonna have to use an, a universal kit. Um, where is it? Right here. So I'm gonna need to use a universal one like this, but now at least we can put the new one on and we won't have to worry about the new one ripping as well. So far we just have some gasket sealer around the boot and that is holding up perfectly fine. I actually got under the car just before I picked the camera to make sure that everything was still good and there's no leaking grease anywhere. So that's a good sign. I'm gonna keep driving like that until we get a leak and then fix it because right now if I don't have to fix it I don't have to fix it thought I'd just give you guys a little update before we end today's video but I do appreciate everyone watching and definitely stay tuned we got some new stuff coming for this car we should have the E30 back soon finally I know it's been a very long time but we'll talk about that later but I appreciate you all watching and I'll see you on the next one peace